So I'd recorded this super long video about my deepest thoughts and what I wish I knew about sports photography and I plugged it into my computer and I realized I forgot to turn off the time code out. I just wanted to tell you guys that because I make stupid mistakes too. I think it would be easy to do it over and make it look pretty, but uh, that's not real life. Here's what I wish I knew about sports photography. We're live here, I'm your host, Daniel Mogg. What's the best piece of advice any person or coach has given you so far? Mm. So let's go back to 2013, 2014. I have zero sports photography experience. I just gotten a job with NBC Sports Sunday Night Football, and they tell me that I'm going to be shooting on the sidelines during the games. What? Sidelines, like where the players are, guys running four threes, running right past you. Yes, that was the opportunity presented to me. So the first ever football game, you, not even youth, college, whatever, it was an NFL game, the Hall of Fame game in Canton, Ohio, between the Vikings and the Steelers. And it was just a total pinch me moment. I got to see Antonio Brown, Ben Roethlisberger, Adrian Peterson. I even got to meet one of my favorite quarterbacks, Peyton Manning. And so it was just an unbelievable first weekend. So I wanna just talk to you guys today who were thinking about getting into sports photography, who have maybe dabbled a little bit and just provide some of the knowledge. I think the biggest thing for me is that I literally, I had zero experience in sports photography before I shot this game. I had shot a couple weddings, I had done some corporate client work and really hadn't shot any sporting events. So I wanted to take some time today, share with you a couple quick tips that I've learned over the years and hopefully these can apply to you. So the first point I would make is that gear matters, but it also doesn't matter. You don't need the biggest lens, the most high expensive camera, but you do need a good zoom lens because that's where gear matters. There are certain limitations, certain just places you can't go because you know, football field, there's guys in the middle of the field, baseball, whatever. You do need a zoom for that extra long reach. So the way that I worked around the super long reach in the beginning for me, cause I really, I couldn't afford much was I got a 70 Mark II, which was a 10 second FPS. You do need a fast frame rate camera. I knew that the 70 Mark II was actually a crop sensor. So a 70 to 200 on a 70 Mark II actually was a, oh shoot, I forgot to do the math. 70 times 1.6. Okay, I can do math, not really. But the 70 to 200 on a 1.6 crop sensor actually turns into a 112 to 300. So that gave me a little extra reach that I needed on the sidelines. And I, I didn't use a monopod, I didn't use any, I literally just had the around my neck and would shoot like this to start off shooting NFL games. My other workaround was that I got a Canon 70 to 200 F4 IS. So this model was a little bit cheaper I got this for just under a thousand dollars and so I was shooting Sunday night football and so that made it tough at some times to shoot at night but majority of you are probably be shooting day games so I would highly recommend you know if there's ways to be smart about your budget to shoot um, on an f4 because the reality is it's going to be probably bright outside you'll have a high shutter speed and so your f-stop doesn't have to be that low but if you are going to be shooting more consistently at night i would look into the 2.8 my second tip is to just go get started if you're passionate about it you'll find some sort of sports league to start building your portfolio whether it's youth high school college if you're in high school or college and want to get into sports photography go ask your team if you can go shoot for them especially on home games if this is something you really want to do you might have to make that investment and you really have to go after it and create opportunities for yourself no one is just going to hand it over to you but once they do give you opportunity that's when you're ready to strike you have the gear then you start building your portfolio so it might be your kids your nieces your nephews ball game not only will it help you build your portfolio but also you'll get to practice using your settings on your camera your shutter your aperture your iso in situations that maybe aren't as high stakes that will lead to errors and whatnot so go get started the third tip would be hone your craft and when i found out i was going to go shoot nfl games i really as i said i hadn't done it before and so i did a lot of research uh, there's a guy named Pete Red Miller who has a fantastic book, which I will link to below that really covers all sports, but has an amazing section on football and how to shoot football. Get your camera manual out, something that honestly I'm not that great at. I've been trying to be better at and just thumbing through, learning the settings, knowing where the buttons are, because really, you know, a half a second, half a millisecond can make the difference between whether you get the shot or not. 
My next point would be know your game. Whatever sport you're covering, know the rules, know, you know how halftime works, know all of those small little details about the game because that will help you be in right position for when the time comes to get the shot. For me, I was a broad football fan. I wasn't, you know, hardcore X's and O's guys, but as I got deeper and deeper into the sports photography and football, I really started to try and understand the game, under look at schemes, guess where the play was going. That way I knew where to be on the field to get the proper shot. And the last part would be show your work. And that's something me myself, I'm trying to improve on and get better at. You know, it's easy to get caught up and just day to day and life, but once you start really building your portfolio, showing your work is the best way to get that next job or that next opportunity. And so, um, you know, that's a big part of why I'm starting this channel. I wanted to show my work, not only for myself, but also to help you guys. I, as I've mentioned before, I really, I didn't have much help when, when I was starting this journey into sports photography and sports content. If I can be of any help to you, um, you know, I would just love that. It's something I'm passionate about. So just a couple of things in review. These are points that I just wish I knew when I was starting out in sports photography. It's gear matters, but also it doesn't. Just get started, hone your craft, know your game, and show your work. I hope these tips were helpful for you. I wanna keep this kind of content coming. As you know, I'm still on my journey uh, and my life as to where I wanna go with sports photography and sports content, but I hope this is helpful for all of you. So hit subscribe, send me some messages, questions. I'd love to answer them, and I'll talk to you guys soon.